Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to learn about Azure Table Storage. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ303 certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Now let's look into what is Table Storage. Azure Table Storage stores large amounts of structured data. The service is a NoSQL data store which accepts authenticated calls from inside and outside the Azure cloud. Azure tables are ideal for storing structured, non-relational data. Common use cases of table storage include storing terabytes of structured data capable of serving web scale applications, storing data sets that don't require complex joins, foreign keys, or stored procedure, and can be denormalized for fast access. Another use case of table storage is you can quickly query data using a clustered index and you can use table storage to store and query huge sets of structured non-relational data and your tables will scale as demand increases. Let's look into some of the table storage concepts. First, you need to understand the URL format. Azure Table Storage account use the format of HTTPS, then it, it will be followed up with the storage account name, .table.core, and then the table name. Then we have accounts. All access to Azure Storage is done through a storage account. Then we have table. A table is a collection of entities, and tables don't enforce a schema on entities, which means a single table can contain entities that have different sets of properties. Next, what is an entity? An entity is a set of properties similar to a database row. An entity in Azure Storage can be up to 1 megabit in size. An entity in Azure Cosmos DB can be up to 2 MB in size. The last concept is properties. A property is a name value pair. Each entity can include up to 252 properties to store data. Each entity also has three system properties that specify a partition key, a row key, and a timestamp. Now let me quickly show you how you can create a table storage. I'm on my Azure portal. Go to your storage account. As you can see, I have a couple of storage accounts already in place. If you want to create a new one, you can click on new and create a brand new storage account. I'm going to go to an existing storage account. You can find table storage under the overview page or under the left hand side blade. Just under the file service, you can find table services. You can either click on tables or you can go to here. Technically the same thing. Under that, you would be able to find all the table storage what I have in my storage account. This is what I was talking about. When you create a storage account, this table storage URL will be at the format of HTTPS storage account.table.co.windows.net and the table name. You can create a new table by going into click on create and provide a table name. I'm going to call it a sample. Click OK. Now you have a sample table account. Now let's look into different types of table service data model. First one is storage account. A storage account is a globally unique entity within the storage system. And the storage account must always be specified in the request URL, just like how I was showing here. So this is your global storage account URI. And this is how you will access the table service. Second is tables, entities, and properties. Tables store data as collection of entities, and entities are similar to rows. An entity has a primary key and a set of properties. And a property is a name type value pair similar to a column. Then we have table names. Table names have to follow certain rules. These rules are table names must be a unique within an account. Table names may contain only alphanumeric characters and tables cannot begin with a numeric character, etc. Then we have property names. Property names are case sensitive strings up to 255 characters in size. And property names should follow naming rules for c sharp identifiers then we have system properties system property is an entity always have either have partition key property row key property or timestamp property so what is partition key property 
So tables are partitioned to support load balancing across storage nodes. A table's entities are organized by partition, and a partition is a consecutive range of entities processing the same partition key value. Now let's look into row key property. A row key is a string value that may be up to 1 KB in size. And finally, we have timestamp property. The timestamp property is a date time value that is maintained on the server side to record the time an entity was last modified. That concludes Azure Table Storage lesson. In the next episode, we're going to look into Azure Cosmos DB. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Thank you.